Edge of Tomorrow was a really interesting movie. I'm so surprised that I hadn't seen this movie till now. And honestly, I'm kind of glad that I did. It was actually pretty cool. Basically, Groundhog's Day mixed in with aliens and you get this movie. Although a lot of it doesn't make sense. And I want to talk about the aliens. Creatures called the Mimics. Just a brief recap of the movie. Tom Cruise is Cage. And he is the main character of the movie. The summary of which is an alien race has hit the earth in an unrelenting assault. Unbeatable by any military. Everyone just keeps getting slaughtered. Major William Cage, played by Tom Cruise, is an officer who has never seen a day of combat. And then one of the superiors who was supposed to be his equal, but turned into a superior, suddenly just throws him into a suicide mission. Of course, he tries to get out of it, but is labeled as a deserter, arrested, and forced to do it anyway. Can you imagine, like, having to fight for your country you don't even want to? I'm sure there are a lot of soldiers that deal with that all the time. But dude, they really captured how afraid he was, because I would have been the same way. So here he is, forced to do what he's never done. After all, he's a public relations officer. Man, they really did him dirty. After being forced into the battle to fight these aliens, he kills a really big blue colored one. As its blood pours into him, something strange happens. He suffers pain, his eyes turn a weird color, he dies, wakes up, and lives the same day over and over again. Like Groundhog's Day, because that premise hasn't been done to death. But it's kind of cool because I have not seen it done with aliens. So as he's living this day over and over again, he can predict what's going to happen. And like a video game where you're playing over the save points over and over again, you put down the game to play something else because you feel like you're going to throw this game through the window, he gets better and better. But he's the only one living this. Nobody else is aware. So when you think about it, there's all these different timelines that are happening for these people that we see die. And for him, it's no big deal. But in every single one of those timelines, those people are dead forever. He is soon paired up with this woman, uh, Emily Blunt, who plays in Quiet Place, because her name is just too hard to pronounce. <laughs> Apparently, she's had this happen to her too, where she was living in a loop. So she automatically believes him. She no longer has a power, but he does. So he's the key to everything. That guy looks so familiar. Where have I seen him before? Of course, we know he's going to fall in love with Rita, which he does. She trains him. And when he fails or gets too injured, she basically pops him to reset him. Even if she dies, he has to kill himself immediately to be reset. If he dies too slowly or he gets blood from someone else, he loses the power. You know what I'm thinking, though? <laughs> In those timelines where she has to kill him just to reset him because she knows that his day will start over, like she knows it for a fact, life doesn't just stop when he loops his day over. She continues living in that timeline as though everything is normal. Nobody is going to jail this woman for shooting this guy. Like, what does she do with his body? And even if, for some stroke of luck, they decide not to arrest her for killing somebody else, for killing another soldier, she still has to go on the rest of her old life if she lives in that timeline, wondering if she did the right thing. Knowing that she killed this dude and just hoping that he was telling the truth and that he came back somehow. But he just never does, at least not in her reality. It's freaking weird. Speaking of loops, the reason why he even has this power is because, get this, and this is where it's so freaking exciting. These aliens have a special power too. They gave him that power. The alpha alien was able to pass that power to him because the aliens have the power to move through time. You see, the reason why they're so undefeatable is because if they do lose, they just keep resetting the day over and over again until they can do what the humans do. Beat them at their own game. It's freaking sick because I've not seen this concept done before. So freaking amazing. So the reason why the aliens know where they are when they attack is because the aliens have lived through that day before and know exactly what the humans are going to do, which makes them undefeatable. Mm -hmm. So throughout each timeline or each loop that he's in, or the loop that he's in, I know it's freaking confusing sometimes. He has to hang out with Rita and try to beat these things. And like 50 first dates or 40 first nights, what's that freaking Adam Sandler movie? 50 first dates. Every single day he has to remind Rita who he is, the plan, everything all over again. But sometimes he has to try different things because he may hit a part in the day where he's not passed that far before. It's basically a video game. He ultimately convinces the other soldiers to come with him because he got some vision from the aliens where the main alien was apparently. Like there's basically this big alien anemone that's in this underwater thing and it's responsible for resetting the day or for giving the information to the aliens so that they can reset themselves. It's, it's, it's it's one of those movies where you kind of get it, but then you, you kind of don't. He dies in a fire explosion. Not really a fire explosion, more like a Pandora blue explosion. And because that hub is killed, all the aliens are naturally killed. Like that thing was Dracula. And uh, yeah. So yeah, let's talk about these aliens. These freaking aberrations of nature. We don't know where they came from. We know that they came to Earth because, you know, same old, same old. They wanted to kill freaking people because like, humans are the worst. So these aliens are called mimics. They're the main antagonists in the Edge of Tomorrow 
a movie. And All You Need Is Kill, which I just found out was like the Japanese book for this thing. I love making videos, man. This is why, you know, you learn so much. But as their bio says, they're a race of brutal alien invaders that seek to conquer different planets throughout the galaxy. They are led by the Omega, which can alter time in order to learn and adapt to their enemy's battle tactics, in order to swiftly overpower and destroy whatever stands in their way. Now, granted, I didn't read the book for these things, but I did get some information off the internet from people who have. And all of this is explained in the novel, apparently. So the invasion originates from another star system, and these aliens are actually terraforming creatures who can also shapeshift. Well, sort of. They can make their bodies into different forms, but they still are just tangled messes. They kind of remind me of Tangela from Pokemon. But anyways, the actual aliens emerge from the sea after coming into contact with starfish and frogs. Another explanation says that the alien race has invaded via nanobot proxies to terraform the Earth for their environmental needs, and they're known as mimics. These alien nanobots have perverted starfish to create the perfect frontline troops. So for these aliens to live, their purpose is to basically terraform Earth so that it's no longer the ideal home for the humans, but they want to kill the humans while they're at it because the humans are putting up a fight. Obviously, if something stands in your way, you're going to want to take care of it. So this is short of it. They were nanobots that evolved into the creatures known as mimics, which explains why they have that weird form and why they actually function more like computers than actual creatures. So the thing basically made itself a freaking time machine. They're always evolving constantly. And the best way to evolve is also to be able to manipulate time in a way that can serve their purposes, especially if they're losing. They're basically the alien life force that's like, no, we're not going to take no for an answer. No matter what, we will get what we want. Even if we have to go back through freaking time. <laughs> it's basically temporal magic. So we have that big anemone thing called the Omega that basically controls all the other things that we see fighting the soldiers called the Mimics. It basically coordinates all of them. And if it ceases to function, they cease to function. Their mouths are perpetually open. I don't know why. So the Omega triggers a time loop if they're grunts fail so they can start the day over again as many times as it takes until they get the desired outcome. The creatures are definitely vulnerable to gunfire, they move very quickly, and their tangled mess can change different shapes to suit whatever it is they're doing. They can make the tips of them very sharp to impale people, to climb, or to burrow into the sand. They can also shoot out little fireball projectiles. In this way, they can take down things that are in the air and humans from far away. They never grow tired, they never need to eat, and they're highly aggressive. It is clear based on the movie, as we can see, these things do have eyes, when their heads turn in the direction that something is, they focus on it and attack immediately. I mean, to be the perfect killing machine, I would have evolved to have eyes all over me, but that's just me. Maybe they're made that way to make them more relatable to people who are watching and make it more scary. The mimics are extremely fast and agile creatures, and you have to have some really good hand-eye coordination just to keep up with these things when they're moving around. <laughs> that it was so freaking random what in the ass okay calm down there sunny jim i know you're getting hard off of this but it's not that serious no random shit like that in the movie makes me wonder because like none of the other aliens do that sheesh god damn it i did it freaking hate that with a freaking vengeance the creatures also as you see is made of numerous tentacles they can swim they can climb with ease they can move upon the land like a freaking wheel the only thing i haven't seen them do or be able to do is fly do you think that would be a very good evolutionary tactic being able to fly just saying they can also throw things grab people squeeze them i mean anything you can think of except for fly since they are basically bots they don't seem to have a very obvious social structure they're just programmed in a way to just do things and they're a hive mind so they just work together to bring down something that's a threat sometimes they work on their own to neutralize something sometimes they don't but in the end it's very clear that they understand each other's thoughts they're all tied into the same system it's like computers being part of the same network so we have these things called the drones they're the tangled messes of garbage that have the orange hue and then we have these slightly bigger ones that have a blue hue to them when they open their mouths blue blue's coming out it's shining out they're called the alphas those ones you do not want to have their blood get on you because and you can reset the day over and over again. And you may think that's a great thing, but if you're winning the war and then you reset the day over, <laughs> there's room for you to mess up and lose the power. And there's this thing called the Omega. It controls all of these other things that we see fighting
fighting the humans. You destroy it, it's basically the central brain, CPU, or motherboard of the aliens. Kill it, damage it, and you kill all the rest of them. You'd think for such intelligent species, or at least species that are based from intelligent life, that they would make sure that there's multiple versions of these. You don't even have one server, you have several of them set up all over, so if one goes down or gets seized, you have backups. I mean, even humans know that. So being that these creatures came in on asteroids, there's no telling if there are others, and we're speculating that there are a lot more than just the ones that we see in the movie, carrying these things all over. As I said before, the drones or the orange colored ones don't have the time power loop thing that the alphas and the omega have. They can launch missile things that we see flying around in the scenes. They're only four feet tall, but they are deadly, fast, and strong. They can alter their physiology in order to form the tendrils that fire the missiles at the humans. And these creatures are deadly killing machines, at least to the average person. However, they don't seem to have very strong armor and can be taken down quite easily if you can get enough bullets in them. As far as I know, the creatures don't reproduce. They seem to come in here with a set amount of numbers. And even though it's many, I mean, it kind of helps that it's a battle of attrition. And when you think about it, they don't really need the numbers because they have the ability to continue resetting time to suit them. If they lose enough of their people, all they have to do is go back in time and start all over again. When you can do that, what's the sense in breeding? My guess is they had to develop this in order to solve the problem of them losing too many of their fight force. From what I can see, these aliens cannot be reasoned with, but they do have a level of intelligence, or rather the Omega itself through the grunts or through the Jones and the alphas have a level of intelligence. They understand that the main character Cage has their power, and near the end of the movie, they know that if they kill him, he will start the day over again and it will be in his advantage, getting a step closer, learning how to kill them, building up his skill. The fact that he is so close in this area to where their central hub is, which is their brain, their very life force, they know that he's definitely a threat and they realize that very early on. Something else, being able to travel or to reset time like they do. So what they do near the end, when they see him, they don't kill him right away. Sure, they fight the forces that are with him, but when he finds the area, these aliens that usually kill things on sight just try to psych him out. They don't want to touch him. They're smart enough to know that if they kill him, he'll reset. So they try to learn more about him. They try intimidation tactics. The alphas, which are also very rare, also join in and they're freaking out. And in this scene, it's one of my favorite scenes out of the movie because it showcases how intelligent they are. Yeah, they're bots, so you'd expect them to be. But at the same time, it's very good when they display the intellect of the enemy, making them very dangerous. We already knew that for the fact that they can adapt this way utilizing time. But here, not only are they aware that this guy has their power, they know that they can't kill him, so they have to try something else. He tries to kill himself, and the Alpha quickly pushes the gun from out of his hand. He knows exactly what that gun does, or it. It knows that if Cage kills himself, he'll reset, and they don't want that. What they want is for him to not have the power, because now he's proving to be a problem. As long as there's one of the humans that have this ability, they're at a disadvantage. So, the alien, apparently knowing that this is a thing, decides to cut Cage. It knows that if he bleeds enough, and loses enough blood, the power will drain out. So the alien literally just sits there waiting. None of them doing anything, just watching him, not wanting to let him out of their sight. He has an idea and decides to drown himself. Before the aliens can do anything or grab him and prevent him from killing himself, he drowns and the day starts over. That's basically what we know about these creatures so far. At least when it comes to the little bit that we know about the novel, which you'd have to read to get the full scope of it. But if we're just going by the movie, the creatures are still badasses. If you haven't watched Edge of Tomorrow, you should definitely watch it because it's yet another alien movie that I think you'll enjoy. It's not a perfect movie, it has its issues, but it's an interesting concept, the whole temporal thing. Now that we introduced that, I know a lot of you were asking me to pit these aliens up against the white spikes and xenomorphs, but you'd have to understand that the time could not be a part of it because they would win by default all the time, no matter what alien they go up against. Unless, of course, one of those aliens like Predator decides to get one of the powers from the Alpha and does the same thing that Cage did in Edge of Tomorrow bar the movie. So we'll be pitting these monsters up against many different xenomorphs or aliens, as is, with their physical abilities and intelligence. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Altiori. You ask, we answer.